Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Arctic Sea Ice Just as Thick as 60 Years Ago. And it includes some good news that skeptics may be starting to win the battle against climate fraud. 60 years ago, the New York Times reported that Arctic sea ice was about 2 meters thick, it was getting thinner, and that within the lifetime of their children, it would be ice-free. Although the idea that a solid ice sheet covers the central Arctic has lingered stubbornly in the popular fancy, the northern cap of ice worn by our planet is actually a thin crust, on the whole only about 7 feet or 2 meters thick. Well, 2 meters thick is almost exactly the same thickness as the ice is now. According to the Danish Meteorological Institute, there's about 24,000 cubic kilometers of sea ice in the Arctic. This is spread out over about 12 million square kilometers of surface area. That works out to an average thickness of about 2 meters across the Arctic. This map on the right from the Danish Meteorological Institute shows the ice thickness. Red ice is very thick, about 4 to 5 meters thick. And the average thickness across the Arctic works out to somewhere in the 2 meter range. So basically the ice is the same thickness as the New York Times reported 60 years ago. That's not to say that the ice is constant, however. The ice changes a lot over time. Around 1920, the Arctic began a period of very rapid warming. The Arctic Ocean is warming up, icebergs are going scarce, and in some places the seals are finding the waters too hot. Reports from fishermen, seal hunters, and explorers all point to a radical change in climatic conditions and hitherto unheard of temperatures in the Arctic. At many points, well-known glaciers have entirely disappeared. This article was from almost 100 years ago, November 2, 1922. By 1939, the glaciers of Norway and Greenland were facing catastrophic collapse. December 17, 1939. All the glaciers in eastern Greenland are rapidly melting. It may, without exaggeration, be said that these glaciers, like those in Norway, face the possibility of a catastrophic collapse. This was Dr. Hans Allman, the leading Arctic expert at the time. By 1955, it was reported that half of the Arctic sea ice had disappeared. Admiral Donald McMillan, an 80-year-old veteran of 30 trips to the Arctic, said that huge areas of ice in the far north are melting, bringing warmer weather. There are now 6 million square miles of ice in the Arctic. There were once 12 million square miles, a 50% loss. The Admiral also reported that almost every single glacier was retreating. Another thing, almost every glacier, with one exception, has retreated going back into the hills is smaller than it was. But this 1920 to 1955 warming ended abruptly. By 1961, there was unanimous consensus among experts that Earth was cooling. The New York Times reported, an assembly of specialists from several continents seems to have reached unanimous agreement on only one point. The world is getting colder. And by 1970, the U.S. and Soviet Union were worried about thickening Arctic ice and the onset of an ice age. By 1975, ice age fears had spread everywhere. Chicago Tribune, Sunday, March 2nd, 1975. Brr, new ice age on way soon. In the last decade, the Arctic ice and snow cap has expanded 12%, and for the first time in this century, ships making for Iceland ports have been impeded by drifting ice. Many climatologists see these signs as evidence that a significant shift in climate is taking place, a shift that could be the forerunner of an ice age. So we know that the Arctic warmed a lot from 1920 to 1955, and then it started cooling rapidly. And this 1985 Department of Energy report showed that. It showed Arctic ice shrinking very rapidly from 1925 to 1955, and then growing very rapidly after that. So even though we have good sea ice data going back to the 1920s, NOAA starts their graphs in 1979. It makes it look like the ice is declining linearly. NOAA claims that 1979 is the start of the satellite era, but they're hiding satellite data from earlier than that. The 1990 IPCC report included satellite data from NOAA going back to the early 1970s. It says right here, data from NOAA. And this is the data that they're hiding now. 
Very inconvenient because sea ice extent was much lower in the early 1970s than it was in 1979. So they throw away all of this inconvenient data and start their graphs in 1979 so that they can create a fake linear downward trend to make it look like carbon dioxide is melting the Arctic. One of the very worst things a scientist can do is hide critical data which wrecks their theory. And that's exactly what NOAA's doing. So let's look at Arctic temperatures over the last century and see what they've been doing. Well, as you can see, they warmed up a lot from 1920 to the 1940s, and they cooled down to 1979, the coldest year on record in the eastern Arctic. And remember, this is right where NOAA starts their graphs. And then it warmed a lot after that. So by starting their sea ice graphs in the coldest year of 1979, NOAA claims a linear warming trend due to carbon dioxide, when in fact Arctic temperatures are very cyclical. There's nothing linear about it. NOAA starting their graphs in 1979 is flat out fraud. As you can see, there's absolutely no correlation between Arctic temperatures and carbon dioxide. Arctic temperatures peaked around 1940 when carbon dioxide was very low. So there's no correlation between carbon dioxide and Arctic temperatures, but there's extremely good correlation between the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation and Arctic temperatures. The AMO is an ocean circulation pattern shown in red here, and you can see it very closely tracks temperatures in the capital of Iceland. Arctic temperatures in ice are controlled by ocean circulation patterns, not carbon dioxide. The whole basis of the global warming scam is completely fraudulent. So how do climate scientists deal with this warm past in the Arctic? Well, that's simple. They simply try to erase it. This line shows the measured temperatures, which peaked around 1940, and the blue line shows their adjusted temperatures. They cool the past way down to make the warm past disappear. This graph is from NASA. But here's where the good news comes in. I captured this graph last October, which showed the final adjustment from NASA. They cooled Reykjavik temperatures way down. But here's their current graph. They stopped doing their cheating. Something changed between last October and now. And here's what changed. A year and a half ago, my good friend, Senator Malcolm Roberts from Queensland, sent a letter off to Gavin Schmidt at NASA showing him what they were doing tampering with the Reykjavik temperatures. And it wasn't just Reykjavik. NASA was doing the same data tampering essentially every station in the eastern Arctic. And here's where the NASA climate director, Gavin Schmidt, angrily denied that he was cheating. You appear to be mistaken as the effect of homogeneity adjustments. But Senator Roberts was spot on. This was the old homogeneity adjustment, and this is the new one. They fixed it. They corrected the error which Senator Roberts pointed out to them. It's a terrible indictment of climate scientists that peer review has to be done by politicians rather than by climate scientists. NASA has been doing this tampering for decades, and it took Senator Roberts to get them to stop doing it. Global warming is the biggest scam in science history. They hide data, they tamper with data, and then they deny that they're doing it. But we're making some progress. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.